Hey guys, today I'm back in Besiege and I want to try making a mono wheel. These things look pretty cool and seem like a fun thing to make. Before I get into it though, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build and manage your website. And you see, the first thing I'm doing here is starting out in the sandbox and I'm moving up the starting block here. After that, you can see I'm putting down a single wood block a couple blocks below that block. And after I get that in place, what I want to do is make a wheel out of those wooden blocks on the bottom. Now to do that, you see I'm setting the rotation to 5 degrees, and I just keep copying it and rotating it each time. And you can see here, I start to build up that arc in the bottom, and once I get enough in place, I end up copying the whole thing over and just start rotating this all the way around. And after I got that here, you see it didn't quite fill out the bottom, but I figured this was probably enough just to give it a test. And when I tried doing that here, it just fell apart. And it was just acting weird too. You can see these pieces are just vibrating like crazy. And this big one, when I try to move it around, is acting like a snake more than anything else. So these blocks are just not very well held together. But I figured maybe the problem was just that I didn't complete the wheel. I didn't really think this was going to solve it, but I thought it at least had a shot at stabilizing things a bit. And you can see it did not really improve things all that much. It just broke apart in the exact same way. So to hopefully improve it a bit, what I wanted to do is add on some braces. Now, I wasn't thrilled about this because I wanted to keep the wheel as open as possible and have as few braces in the middle as I needed to. This was mainly just for aesthetic reasons because I figured if it looked like a bicycle wheel it was just going to be a little weird. And you can see even that still wasn't able to make it work. So I added on some extra braces to the outside like this. Finally here it at least was holding together but not very well. You see it starts to rotate but things are just shifting around weirdly and I have some blocks here that ended up kicking themselves out of the wheel just a little bit. But since I at least had a wheel that was somewhat holding together I wanted to try making it move and to do that you see I'm putting two wheels in the middle. Now the idea is as these rotate it should rotate the outside, but it just made it fall apart. And I'm not even trying to rotate these, it's just merely their presence that's making it all fall apart. So since this was really unstable, I ended up deleting it, and I wanted to try again, but this time, instead of doing a 5 degree increment, I wanted to do a 10 degree increment. And you can see here, that means the two blocks are going to be slightly separated. Now, this should prevent all those vibration issues and all that, so nothing should be clipping into anything else, and in theory, this should work. Now, just trying it out like this, you see it falls apart right away, and it's because the blocks aren't held together by anything. So to do that, that, you see I'm putting down a whole bunch of braces on the outside, connecting each of the blocks to the one next to it. And after I got that going all the way around, you can see here in this test, it does this. It actually is pretty cool, and I could see using this as a tank tread in the future, but for now, it's not really going to be that useful. So to hopefully make it a little bit stronger, what I wanted to do is add on a whole bunch of braces on the inside. Now, this doesn't really ruin the aesthetic at all, because you see, they don't really cross on the inside, they're just hitting the insides of the blocks. And this helped a little, maybe, but it really didn't give it that much more strength. So I ended up adding some braces like this, and you can see here, it vastly improved things. Now, I still didn't want to use these, so what I ended up deciding on instead was to put these braces on, where they sort of go around and hit every fourth block. Now, by doing this, you can see, once it hits the ground, it's actually pretty good. And this is stable enough that I think I could start building with it. Now you did see it kind of was compressing a bit, but I also dropped it from a reasonably high height, so if it just rests on the ground, I think it'll support itself. Now to get this moving, you can see here I have a wheel in the middle, and I'm putting two wheels on the outside like this. The idea is that all these wheels are going to rotate together and hopefully push up against the large wheel. Now, I didn't quite have it set correctly here, so it ended up just doing that. So to hopefully solve that problem, what I ended up deciding on was using two suspension blocks in the middle here. Now these suspension blocks are hopefully going to pull in the two pieces together with the help of an extra piston, and by doing that, they're going to have some tension against the center wheel, and therefore they're not going to want to fall off of it. Now, just telling that piston to stay extended. You can see here, once I compress it in, it is pulling those two wheels together, and it kind of seems to be working. When I try to make it move, though, it's a little rough. It does go back and forth, which is great, but you also see it starts rotating to the sides a bit, and that's really going to mess things up. So to hopefully prevent it from just rotating like that, you see I'm putting down some wheels in the back, and these wheels are hopefully just going to trace along the large wheel and help things out, but they didn't really seem to do that either. You see, they're just slipping off as well. Now, the best test I got with this, you can see I compressed it in, and it started to ride up this wheel, and the big wheel actually did start to move, but then it just fell over. So I also added on these wheels in the front as well, and I was hoping maybe this would give me a little bit more strength, and you can see it is a little bit better now. It's actually starting to rotate on its own, and it's not just immediately falling over, but it's still pretty unstable. You see, sometimes it just starts vibrating like crazy, and the whole wheel does end up just falling apart. So to hopefully give myself a little bit more stability, you can see here I'm pulling the whole thing apart, and I'm actually adding on two extra layers to this wheel. Now, I decided on three layers here, because with just two, it still seems like it's gonna be a little bit tippy, but with this, it should be good enough that it doesn't just immediately fall over. Now, with that wheel extended, you can see here I'm putting down the two sections of the wheel back together, and I just need to extend out the wheels in the front and the back so that they actually extend out over the entire wheel. You can see it's not exactly great. When it tries to pull in, the whole thing sort of shifts to the sides, and the wheels end up slipping off of the big wheel. So I ended up getting rid of the piston here and just seeing how it would do without it. And it actually seemed to be reasonably stable, but it kind of tipped on its back really quickly. So I added on some extra wood pieces to hold it all together.
together, but even after that, you see it still just immediately tipped over. And to fix that problem, I just sort of tapped W instead of holding it down, and for the most part, that ended up solving it. Now, I'm gonna need some system to not have it immediately tip over on its own, but at least this is somewhat manageable, and you can see here, the wheel's starting to go at a reasonably good speed. Now, after a bit, it sort of started to get caught, and you can see here, even though I'm holding forward, the center portion is sort of getting caught on the back. So I ended up getting rid of all the extra suspension, and I'm just using wood at this point, and it seems to be doing a little bit better. You can see now I'm getting a pretty constant speed. It doesn't get caught too often, though it sometimes still does get caught, but it actually looks pretty good, and with this done, what I wanted to do next was come up with a system to prevent it from just tipping on its back when I held it down for too long. And to do that, you can see here I'm putting in an angle meter. Now what this angle meter is going to do is just detect when the angle gets a little bit too steep, and it's just going to cut out my powered wheels from moving entirely. And you can see that happening here. Whenever this light turns off, it means it's gone up too steep, and it's not applying power anymore. Now, I noticed it was slipping a little bit on the wheel, and to prevent that from happening, I actually put down some extra weights like this, and it seemed to help things out a little bit. You can see here I'm getting up to a little bit of a greater speed, but having these wheels on the top makes it a little bit top heavy, so I ended up moving them to the sides like this, and once I did that, you can see the whole thing here seems to behave in basically the same way, except now it doesn't want to fall on its back. Now, I ended up giving it a test drive here, and it looked great, but once I stopped applying power, it sort of just fell straight out of the wheel, and the wheel just continued on. So, it hopefully prevented from just slipping out. What I wanted to do was add on some half pipes to the sides. The half pipes are pretty good because they have very low friction, so in this case they're going to grab onto the side and hopefully not make it get caught on anything. After getting one of those put in place, you can see here it looks pretty good, and I wanted to add on all the others as well. And you can see here, after I got those on, it actually seemed to be pretty bad. They were sort of shaking around a lot, and it seemed like the half pipes in the back were kind of rubbing against the ground, and that prevented them from really getting any speed. So what I decided to do next was also add on some wheels like this, and hopefully replace the half pipes with those instead. And it seemed to be a little bit better. You can see here, it actually seemed to be kind of going in a straight line, I wasn't shaking around a lot. So I added those wheels onto the back as well, and once I did that, it seemed to be a little bit worse because it was rubbing onto the ground, but for the most part, it actually seemed to be okay. Now, for some reason, it did start to wobble like this, and I'm not sure exactly what caused this. It might have just been the fact that it was rubbing unevenly, it started to do this, but the whole thing almost fell over. So I was thinking to give it a little bit more stability, what I could do is add on a second layer to the wheel, and to do that, you can see here, I'm just putting down a whole other layer of these wood blocks. Now, I was a little bit worried that it was going to be a bumpier ride, since now there's quite a large distance between each of the spokes, but as I try to start it up here, you can see it's not really that big of a deal at all, and it seems to work out just fine. Now, I ended up deleting the half pipes at this point since I was pretty sure they were doing nothing, and that was about right. It was a little bit bumpier, but it didn't seem to make that big of a difference. And once I got up to speed here, you can see it's just working out fine. So, with the forward and backward control finally sorted out, the next thing I want to do is work on turning. Now, you see here I have a wheel on top, and I set it at 10 times speed, so as it starts to spin up, it sort of works like a reaction wheel, and it spins the entire thing in the opposite direction. It's a little slow at turning, but it seems to work well enough. I figure once I'm up to speed, I'm not going to want to turn that fast anyway. And it does start to turn, but but it also starts to tilt me, and it's sort of a problem because I sort of fall into this death wobble, and there's nothing I can do about it. Now, I thought the problem here might have been that as I move forward, the entire middle part starts to tilt up a little bit, and with the wheel rotating on a slightly tilted axis, it might also impart some tilt, and I thought that might have been the problem. So I added on two wheels here, and these rotate backwards, and the whole idea of these is going to keep the entire machine pretty much straight on the ground. Now, it didn't really like that. So I ended up adding some weights and lowering the speed of these so that it didn't do that. And you can see here, as I start to move, it does have quite a bit of rotational power, and you see it just starts rotating on the ground. After you're tuning those up a little bit, you can see as I get these up to speed, the machine is pretty much at the lowest possible point on the wheel, and I figured that this should probably fix the problem I was seeing before. So I just moved them out a little bit further so they weren't rubbing against the machine. With that looking pretty much good, I added on this wheel once again. I set it at 8 times speed, and you can see here, it actually kind of seemed to help, but it was still tilting a lot, and and these wheels ended up hitting the ground quite a bit as it tilted, and that just caused a massive problem. So I ended up finally deciding to add on a reaction wheel to tilt it side to side so that I can hopefully manually fix this problem. And you can see here as I start to spin this up, I start to tilt the wheel from the left to the right, and this should be enough to cancel everything out. Now originally I was hoping I could just use this to turn and I wouldn't need anything else, and it almost seemed to work, but every time I tilted and started to turn, it just turned right back immediately, so this really didn't seem to solve my problem. So once again I added on the reaction wheel on the top, and what I wanted to do was just have this wheel and the other wheel spin at the exact same time, so that any tilting that the top wheel creates is immediately cancelled out by the bottom one. I figured this was the simplest solution since it just required me to use one set of keys, but it didn't seem to work. In fact, you can see it is starting to move side to side, but it ends up not really going that far at all. So I ended up reversing it, thinking maybe I got it backwards, but once I did this, you can see that those tilting motions actually add together now, and the whole wheel almost immediately falls over. So I ended up setting this to a separate control, and I guess I had the speed set up a little bit high, because it seemed to rub up against some stuff, and and do that. And some future tests didn't go so well either. You can see here, 
Uh, so I ended up moving some pieces out of the way so that they'd collide a little bit less often. And after I did that, you see here I'm giving it a test, and it actually doesn't seem to be terrible. It is hitting itself a little bit, but I was able to turn here. You can see I slightly rotated it. And I realized now there's sort of an art to turning this. What you want to do is spin up the top part that I have going right now, and after it starts to tilt a little bit too much, only then do you start to correct the tilt. With this motion, it's at least somewhat possible to get a slight rotation out of this, and it's not that terrible to control. Now, it took a lot of learning to get this to work right, and a lot of the time I ended up turning a little bit too harshly, and that caused a whole bunch of problems. But finally here, I added on the camera to always have me facing towards the back of this, and giving it a run here, you can see it's actually not too bad. Moves forward and backward just fine, and the turning, now that I have it figured out, it's not perfect, there is still a wide turning radius, but it's reasonably sharp, and I'd consider it good enough for this machine. Now I ended up getting a little bit aggressive with the turn here, and then I accidentally overcorrected it, and that just caused a lot of problems, and I immediately fell out. But you can see here, giving it some more tests through the arches and whatever, actually seems pretty good and pretty much go wherever I want to go as long as I don't turn too sharply. And I actually turned off on breakable mode here because I was curious if it would work and it does but I have to basically half the speed but honestly it still goes reasonably fast and with that not too bad. And I have a few more clips I want to show you here, but there's something I want to tell you about first. Imagine that you want to make a car into Siege, so you take hours making a piston engine from scratch, struggle developing rack and pinion steering, and tie it together with a sketchy transmission only to make a car that can barely go a mile an hour. This is often what it's like trying to make a website on your own. With Squarespace though, their all-in-one platform makes it easy to build beautiful websites and get off to the races. They have plenty of professionally designed custom templates to choose from so that you don't need to struggle trying to design your entire website from the ground up. If you want to develop an e-commerce site, connect extensions to help you manage inventory, promote products, deal sales tax, and ship items across the globe. You can even create members-only content in exclusive areas to build a closer connection with your audience. So if you're looking to make a website, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch it, go to squarespace.com slash recaptain and save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So guys, thanks for watching. Someone in my Discord server suggested that I try building this, and I thought it was a pretty good time to do. So if you have any other suggestions of what I should make, post it down in the comments below. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Thanks again to our sponsor, Squarespace. And otherwise, until next time.